Hello everyone and welcome to this, my video on applying Pythagoras' theorem. My name is Darren from Maths Guru. Uh, welcome, thank you very much for joining me. Hopefully you're going to find this video useful. Now if you want to know where these notes I'm going to write all over can be downloaded for, it's mathsguru.com. Oh yes, nice and easy to spell. Not, but if you head over there, there's all of these videos for the whole series as well. The only thing I'm going to ask is if you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Yes, very needy, but so very few people watch maths videos and particularly my content. If you can subscribe and you found it and you find it useful and subscribe, it really does make my day. I get a little bit emotional, really. But anyway, there's a whole new discussion. Now, what I would normally do is go through the learning objectives, but come on, guys, you guys can read. But effectively, we're going to take the learning from the previous videos and apply it now to some real world situations. And you're going to say real world? Oh, yes, real world. There are triangles everywhere in life. Now, uh, let's recap first, because some of you may well have not watched my previous videos. How could you come on, please. Here is a Pythagoras' theorem at c squared equals a squared plus b squared. I mean, is it his theorem? Did he actually steal it from someone? Allegedly, who knows? There's a video on that as well. But just remember, this is only true for right angle triangles, right? So if you have a triangle with a right angle in it, you can use Pythagoras' theorem. Otherwise, sadly, not. But there are videos coming on what you can use as well. Now, they turn around and say, well, how does this even work? I, as I've explained in a previous video, turn around and say, well, what Pythagoras has found for certain squares, that when you put certain squares together, they created a right angle triangle. Or more importantly, what they actually did was they touched corners. And then later on, I think someone turned around and went, oh, look, that's a right angle, or at least called it a right angle. Now, what these very clever scholars did, or Pythagoras was said, well, if we know that this side length here is A, we know that this square here has an area of A squared. Yeah, because how do you find the area of a square? It's base times height, which is A times A or A squared. If this triangle here had a side length of B there, then the area of that square would be B squared. Yeah, because B times B would give me B squared. And likewise, if this had a length of C, then the area of this square here would be C squared. And actually what Pythag said, other than, you know, the side length of the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, or something like that, what he actually found out was if I do the area of this square and the area of that square and added them together, I got the area of that square there, which again, sometimes makes life a little bit easier to try and work out. At least it does for me. So there's the basis of Pythagoras. Let's get into this everywhere. Now, you know, I built a house a long time ago. Not me personally. I actually paid people. I've got no idea how to build a house. Although I could give it a go. Maybe not. And what I found was some dude, not maybe that dude, I found him on the internet. And actually that also sounds really creepy. Moving on. He actually was putting walls together, all right? Or he was making the structure for the walls. And these little things here are called noggins. How exciting is that? And these here are called supports, mm, joists. Let's call them joists. And what he was doing was trying to make they were square. And I said to him, hey, mate, how are you doing this? And he went, I'm using a bit of Pythag. And I went, a bit of Pythag? And he went, a bit of Pythag. And I went, I'm a maths teacher. That's very exciting. Show me how. And what he did was he basically had a right angle triangle that he'd made himself. All right, and we'll come back to the type of triangle he made in a moment. But he basically made a right angle triangle. And when he put it on the floor here, when he put it on the floor here, then he could use the vertical part of the triangle to work out how it's going to be level. Now, I know some people use spirit levels, but no word of a lie, lots and lots of tradies use Pythagoras without even really knowing it. So the point of it is, is to know where there's right angle triangles. If you can see a right angle triangle in any diagram, then you are cooking on gas or electric. And again, what's that got to do with the price of fish? Now, in a previous video, I talked about special types of triangles. And there are a number of special types of triangles that actually we try and hide in questions from you. And they are called Pythagorean triples or Pythagorean triads. But I get to the point of triads and it all gets very, very scary with martial arts. So if we look at this one here, one of the Pythagorean triples, it we call a three, four, five triangle, all right? Now that will always be right angle. If I've got one side that's three, one side that's four, and the hypotenuse is five, it will always be right angle. And so basically, when we do questions on this, I will guarantee you that I will hide a three and a four in there somewhere. So one of the triangles will be three, and one of them will be four, and people will go away and they'll do the whole a squared equals b squared plus c squared, or whatever it is. And then they'll come back to, they'll go, oh, I could have done it in my head. 
And yes, there is nothing wrong with doing this in your head. If you see a three, a four, and a right angle triangle, you can automatically go with that one as five. What is there another one? Now you notice I'm not making my triangles any bigger, but there is a five, 12, and 13. And you've got to remember that the longest side always goes on the hypotenuse. And again, if you see a five and a 12 and a right angle triangle, you can automatically go for that side length there as 13. But of course, having taught this now, I've got to make it even trickier for you, haven't I? So how do I do that? Well, I basically just double the sides. So I might make that six and eight. And again, people go, oh, this is so hard, I can't do this. And they go away and they use the calculator, but I've just doubled the side lengths. So if I've doubled the three and I've doubled the four, what do you think is gonna to happen to the five? It is gonna double. So a six, eight, 10 triangle is also Pythagorean because all I'm doing is I'm actually multiplying all my side lengths by two. And so here, as I say, are the ones that you probably need to know, or the ones that we probably use the most. Three, four, five, five, 12, 13, seven, 24, 25, and nine, 40, 41. There are so many more. You can actually look them up on the interweb if that's what you need to do. Right, so let's look at a real world example because I have wow, rambled on enough. Two skyscrapers are located 25 meters apart and a cable links the top of the two buildings. Hmm. Now what I say to my students is wherever you see a slanted line, that can always be turned into a right angle triangle. That slanted line there, right, because it's got a end of a slanted line and the end of a slanted line, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn that into a right angle triangle. There we go, there is my right angle triangle. Hmm, now let's see where we go. Find the length of the cable. Oh, okay, so it's now saying find this length. My mind is now going Pythagoras theorem. If the buildings are 50 meters and 80 meters in height. Right, oh, hold on a moment. Well, to be able to do this, they've got to give me two side lengths. I've got to know this side length here, <laughs> which they've already told me in the question is 25. But how am I now gonna find this difference in height? Ah, again, we're just trying to obscure the information for you. We've told you the buildings are 50 meters and 80 meters in height. So that's 50 meters, that's 80 meters. So the difference, if I know that that's 50 and that's 80, then this bit here must be a staggeringly amazing 30 meters. Right, so there we go, I've got a right angle triangle. So what I've got, 25, I've got 30, and now I'm gonna call that C. Well, what do I do? Well, I can use Pythagoras' theorem now. It's not a nice, easy three, four, five triangle. And so what I'm now gonna say then is I'm gonna say, well, therefore C squared is A squared plus B squared. C squared, we don't know, we're trying to find it. Let's choose A is 25 squared and B is 30 squared. Now, what I'm gonna do now is just fire up my calculator, right? So I'm gonna use my calculator here. You guys, if you're out there with a year nine school who uses TI Inspire, uh, then that's awesome, or a class pad, go for it. If you're using just a standard calculator, don't worry about my calculator, it's, it's effectively still a calculator. He says, just going on and on and on and on. So what I'm now gonna do is 25 squared, and I'm gonna add that to 30 squared, and here enter is 1525. So this is a level of working out that I tend to get my students to do. Right, so now C is gonna become equal to the square root of 1525. Why? Because to get rid of a square, I have to square root both sides. How do I do that on my calculator? I go control and square root, and then I can just go control and answer and hit enter, and I get five root 61. Now, for those of you watching previous videos, we'll go, well, hold on a moment, that looks a bit funny. It does, five root 61 is an exact value, it's a third. Does the question want it as an exact value? Well, let's go and have a look, and it's always a good idea to make sure that you highlight the order of magnitude it wants our answers. Give your answer correct to two decimal places. Right, so I know that I can go control and enter, and it will actually give me 6.25 as my length, he says, trying to get rid of that. Let's put this back on. So C becomes equal to 6.25. Hold on a moment, that doesn't make any sense, does it? How would that cable be 6.25 meters long? That's 25, that's 30, that can't be six, it's gotta be longer than my 30. And that's the trick of the calculator. So actually what I have to do is I copy down the value I want to do and then do control and enter and it gives me 39.05. Does that make more sense? 
five, and don't forget my units of meters. Is that longer than both of my other two sides? It is, and so life is done.